itself, we are carrying along the teachers, we are carrying along the parents, we are carrying along the state governments, we are carrying along the local governments, we are carrying along the private sector, like the farmers, because each state, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the food that you serve in, the, in each state has to be produced by the farmers in the place, so that it also affects the economy of the place. So, in terms of compliance, you know, uh, there is a very diligent, over, uh, diligent oversight that is in place, my brother. So, Mr. Conde, you are therefore saying to us that that video that we saw on social media is a fake. Because there was a video yeah, there are, there are showing of, us uh, the quality of food there. that is served to these children. There are a lot of fake videos out there. Okay. You know, uh, and uh, each time it comes out, we try to quickly clarify that this is not what is happening. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the home growth school feeding in particular, where today we are feeding about 9.3 million uh, puppies in 26 states, mm. it, it, it's one of the programs that we pay very good attention to. As a matter of fact, all of our, of our four programs, you know, they are diligently planned. I can, I can guarantee to you that all the issues about safety, about quality, about care, about uh, uh, cleanliness, all of these okay. things are being adequately, diligently, carefully uh, uh, considered. We're not taking these things for granted at all. These okay. are our children, and, okay. and we will make sure that it is done right. Those okay. are fake videos, and they should be ignored. Okay. Uh, we are happy that you say that these um, graduates don't need to know anybody, that everything is done online or something to that effect. But uh, earlier this year, we did hear, or uh, please, um, you, you are free to actually correct us if we're wrong, there was something about an investigation about some fraud that was discovered in the SIP program? And the FCC well, was I think brought there, there, there was one isolated case, I believe, in, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't mention the name of the state, just okay. one case. In, you know, a, that in we, a state. We discovered an official uh, was not following uh, the, 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 the procedures that has been laid out. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the state government, you know, cooperated with us, you know, to very promptly, you know, identify who was at fault. And, and, and they, were, they, they, they were removed. Uh, disciplined, and then the, the program is going on uh, smoothly. So, so there is no such thing as uh, 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 you know a, a big fraud, fraud, you know, involved at all. It, it was just you know uh, misrepresented and basically escalated. It was just one instance, okay. you know, and, and it, it, it's been dealt with. It's been dealt with and corrected. I mean, okay. you, you, you can't have a country as big as Nigeria, a program as huge as that, you know, uh, and not see one or two attempts to try to beat the system. Correct. But we have in place a system, uh, uh, rules and regulation, a okay. structure that ensures that if somebody wants to beat the system, they will be detected and, and quickly dealt with. And this was what happened in that okay. particular instance. Okay. Mr. Conde, the uh, conditional cash transfer, the CCT, um, it's uh, supposed to be the poverty reduction scheme providing cash transfers of uh, between 5,000 Naira and 1 million Naira to very poor and vulnerable Nigerians. Now, can you quickly tell us how you determine those to whom these funds are given? These loans, rather. Th thank you. So, uh, it, 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 it's uh, 5,000 monthly uh, and we intend to reach one million, uh, you know, of our people that we consider to be the poorest of the poor. Mm. So, so it's 5,000 monthly. I'm trying to target one million. Now, okay. so how do we identify the people that are considered to be exactly. the poorest of the poor mm. among us? Mm. So we, we, the, the, there is um, a model developed by the World Bank. It's called the, 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 the community-based targeting. Community-based targeting. It's a World Bank model that details how it is that you go to a community. So you identify a state, you identify local government in the state, you identify communities that make up the local government, and then you say, in this state, uh, which local government is the poorest? And when you get to local government, in this local government, which communities are considered to be the poorest? Mm -hmm. And then you go to those communities, you bring out the people in the community men, women, children, the, the leaders of the community, the traditional rulers, and other uh, categories of leadership. You call everybody, including the state government, including the uh, local government, you call everybody to an open meeting, mm -hmm. possibly in the town hall or in the public square, mm -hmm. open meeting. 
And we say, all right, what we want to identify here is that how, what are the yardsticks to measure uh, poverty? And in this particular community, what is considered to be uh, a, 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 a reflection of poverty? And so in, in, in some places, uh, the people in the community say that, oh, well, we know that in that house, in this house, uh, they eat only once a day. Uh, you don't even see them cooking for maybe for, for days. Mm -hmm. so, so each community will develop their own criteria. Okay. You know, and you see that from one community to the other, it differs. Now, once the criteria has been developed in that open meeting, then we begin to identify, we begin to ask the people to identify for us who are the people in your communities that you consider that they fit in into this model. So that is how we identify them. Now, after we have even done that, there's also a grievance procedure that you know, somebody else can come later and say, no, that family that you picked, uh, or that asshole that you pick, actually they get, uh, somebody sends money from, to them abroad, you know, that, that uh, we, we didn't know. Mm. And again, we investigate that. Okay. okay. So, so uh, the point I'm making here is that we have a very, a, a fairly watertight approach, a, a, a fairly, let me say, reasonable way in which we identify in the community because it's the people in the community themselves that are identifying who the poor people are and then okay. we are now adding the names of those people to, to what is called a social register. And like okay. I said, this is a World Bank model and this is what we are doing in all the, I think about 19 or 19 states right now that we are doing the conditional cash transfer and today I can report to Nigerians that, that the federal government is paying 5000 monthly to almost 300,000 of such Nigerians, I believe, in about 19 or 20 states already. Uh, Mr. Kande, the, that question, again, I'll take you back to institutionalizing these initiatives, as commendable as they are. What about institutionalizing? I asked you a question earlier about compliance. Now, we were looking at those who are supplying the food and those who are accepting, absorbing this graduates. Let's look at the compliance in terms of the graduates themselves for the end power program are they compliant because i have a tweet here from steve he says the participants in the end power program are only interested in collecting their pay or whatever stipends that come their way and then they sort of abscond is there a way to ensure compliance on the part of these beneficiaries that's one the second question is this some of these participants say they are not being paid. They just get there and they are given transport stipend, not the 30,000 naira we talked about. You, you mentioned that they are being paid monthly. Mm. So how do you ensure compliance on both sides? Okay, so, so thank you very much. So, so, so talking about compliance on the part of the, of, of the beneficiaries. Now, in each of the states, we have a focal person, uh, who is a, a state government, a top state government official who we hold responsible and who we work with uh, to cross-check the claims of somebody that was picked. So if you say you are a graduate, you know, uh, they, they, they're going to check out your certificate, you know, they're going to check out your claims, and then the focal person will be the one that will deploy you because we don't know as federal government where the states need help. So you see, we we'll work with the state government. So, so we ask the governor to please appoint a focal person who has sufficient access to the governor so that we can get things done very quickly. So the focal person takes responsibility, you know, to do the cross-checking, you know, checking the claims, checking the documents, checking the credentials, and then be in charge of deployment. And also, after you've been deployed, there are also ways in which your, your performance is measured, whether indeed you are reporting for work, you know, whether indeed you are disciplined, you are diligent, or you know, somebody is a trant. Now, there are, there, there are ways and means that in which we deal with people who are not compliant very clearly, and there are instances where uh, measures will have to be adopted uh, for those who don't comply. So, so, so that this with, with compliance. I, I don't remember the second question that you asked. Can, can you are not please? paid. Where the employers of these empower beneficiaries do not pay them. Maybe just give them tra transport stipend, and then some don't even okay. get paid at all. All right. So, so, so the, the federal government is the one 
that is pain. All right, and, and what we have done is that once uh, uh, a, a, a beneficiary has been, has been picked and, and checked out, their credentials are, are for real, and then they are deployed, we open uh, an account for them. They, 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 we, we do a biometric registration, sorry, a BVN, uh, and so that the money goes from the coffers of the federal government directly, directly. to the Empower uh, beneficiary. No, okay. no, middle, uh, okay. no middle person involved. Okay. Now, so if somebody is not being paid, it must be that uh, the person has not fully uh, demonstrated that they are qualified, or they've been found uh, to be lacking in their in, 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 the, in their work. Okay, okay. No, Mr. We, Conde, we don't pay them through other sources. Okay, the money comes directly into their account from the federal government to their coffers. Mr. Conde, I, Mr. Conde, just quickly, I need to, to read, is that. I need to read out this tweet to you from Festus Akimboyewa in support of N Power. Two of my nephews were accepted for the program recently without going through anybody. So that is kudos to you. And while you're still Thank waiting, you. there's this other one you need to listen to. Um, in, by November 2018, some people will exit the program. What is the plan for them? And then add this real quick as you wind down. Please keep it short. What's the difference between the Empire and the UN? I mean, UN, individuals are empowered to create jobs for others, but the Empire government is creating the jobs. How effective would this be? Well, so far, it's, uh, it's, it, it's proven to be very effective. Like, like, I, like I mentioned to you, we have, uh, I mean, based on the testimonies of the, uh, of, of, of the beneficiaries that, 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 that we have, uh, you know, a lot of them are very excited every time that, uh, uh, that the president or the vice president goes out of Abuja, you see, you know, empire beneficiaries always there in their large numbers, you know, telling us stories of how they've been empowered, telling us stories of some of the things that they, are, they have been able to do that they couldn't do before, telling us stories about how excited they are that they are contributing uh, to, to, their, to, their, to their communities. So clearly, you know, uh, the impact is being made. And when you compare it with UIN, I think, you know, uh, in, in terms of scale, you know, one of the differences is that in, in, in terms of scale uh, and the fact that uh, this, is, this is specifically for university graduates, uh, they, we, we are, and, and we are empowering them, you know, by exposing them to more information, to more knowledge, and helping them in two years to be able to earn some income why they become more employable, get us some experience right. so that they can do something for themselves going forward or actually uh, get better jobs. Thank you very much, Mr. Laulu Akonde, Senior Special Assistant to the Vice President of Media and Publicity. But just before you go, hear this tweet and please see something can be done about it. It says, Benefic NPAR beneficiaries of 2007 have not been paid. They were deployed in July this year, and even at that, no money has reached their account till date. So I hope the government will quickly look into that. Thank you very much, Mr. Akonde. Sunrise will be back in a moment. Please don't go away.